Today on Dice Jet, all we are going down to the bayou to get ourselves some good old gator meat. Mmm, -hmm. sounds real good right there. Yeah, I uh, apologize to all of you I just offended, but today we are making ourselves a swamp base for some little plastic dudes. Enough dilly dally, let's dive on in. For our supplies, we are going to use some cork with various thicknesses, a stick from the outdoors, super glue, PVA glue, some mixed sand, Vallejo thick mud and sand texture paste, green tea leaves, Vallejo water texture, and some grass tufts from Army Painter and Warlord Games. All of the paints we'll be using today are also Army Painter as I wanted to give the brand the good old college try. All right, first things first. Rip up your cork and get a basic plan of how you want to set up the theme of the base. Getting a simple plan of where you want some extra features is always a good thing to do to spark up the imagination and create a cooler looking base. Personally, I just use super glue on the base and stick the cork on it. I find the drying process significantly faster than PVA glue, especially if you have some accelerant spray. Keep in mind as well that if you are looking to set up a small pool of water, the cork can be a good outline for that plan. If you create some recessed areas, it will give the water mix a chance to settle into that section creating a strong bond. Once you got your cork glued onto the base, I make a decision on where I should sprinkle some mixed sand. I have a lot of super glue, so I use that once again, but PVA is a quality substitute. Also, ignore the flight stand. Hopefully that guy won't get in the way of any shots. And then, after a little while playing in the sandbox, we move over to adding some more interest into the base. And by interest, I mean go out into the backyard, find a stick, and put it on your base. Also, make sure anything you gather from the great outdoors is dry. You don't want it to start rotting down the line. Oh, and you can also coat it in glue, and that should help preserve the nature as well. After playing outside for all of four seconds, we run back indoors where we belong and begin making ourselves an Oreo. Unfortunately, not one for eating. Now, by no means do you have to use both Vallejo, sand, and mud mixture, I just personally like the difference in the texture. The sand is more smooth with smaller size grain, while the mud is thicker and globs on more of the surface. I find this combination makes for an interesting texture and looks like some cookies and cream ice cream. Or at least the store-bought brand that kind of tastes fine, but not as good as that name brand stuff. Give it time for this step to dry and then prime the base with a Zenithal highlight. Now I used my airbrush for this step, but a priming of black and then dry brushing up the brightness on the base will also do the trick. Also, I tend not to film where I do my airbrushing because it looks like as if I have murdered someone back here in my basement. When that is complete, we are ready for some painting. Now, don't feel the need to copy the exact paints I use, but I will mention what I'm using during each step. Everything will be painted up using Army Painter brand for this project because the folks over at War Games Delivered were nice enough to send me some paints. More information about them at the end of the video. Right away, I do a thin down base coat of oak brown over the whole base. I make sure it is opaque enough that some of the Zenithal highlight bleeds through. I just slap this paint over everything and call it a day. Now, while this paint is still wet, I attempt to wet blend like someone who is terrible at wet blending, which I am, so this should work out perfectly. For the areas I want to focus on green or greenish blue, I blend in angel green first, followed by green skin, and then a little bit of wizard's orb in the water pools and other highlight areas. For the browns, we blend in leather brown and monster brown. Keep in mind, all of these paints are going on while the paints have yet to dry. This gives you the opportunity to make nice and clean globs of swampy themes all around your base. Once all of this has dried, I use the Strong Tone Wash. I thin it down about 50-50 or so with water and apply it all over the base. This wash will dig and settle into the recesses, making our swamp look more grungy. Once that wash settles in and dries, we want to brighten things back up a bit. I went ahead and dry brushed everything with a little bit of green skin just to give it a little bit of that greenish pop. Now, to be honest, after all of these steps, the base looks fine, but it isn't great yet. 
That's when you take out what your mother might think is a bag of pot that you have been selling at the street corner, when really, it is a bag of tea leaves. For the leaves, all you gotta do is lay down some watered down PVA, sprinkle on this nice smelling product, and let it dry. For an extra secure adhesion to the base, I'll make sure to dab on even more watered down PVA when it has dried up some. We are in the home stretch now, folks. For any other features I want to accentuate, like the stick I adhered to the base, I run back over this guy with some dry brushing of Monster Brown, and then a little bit of tiny, tiny bit of necrotic flesh right after. I want the wood to stand out from the rest of the piece, while also looking like it has been sitting here in the swamp for a very long time. Once the leaves and the extra bits are done and dry, we move on to a little bit more dry brushing. We take some scaly hide paint and do a nice light dry brush over the base. We really focus on the high areas and the green tea leaves we glued down. Following this, we whip out some grass tufts. I use some Army Painter and Warlord Games brand tufts. I like both of these brands, and each company has a number of options to choose from. Just pick some you like and just go with them. After this is the final step, the little pools of water. We whip out our Vallejo water texture tube and add some drops in the crevasses we created way back at the beginning. To add a little touch to the water, I thin down some wizard's orb paint and put a tiny bit here and there and swirl it around. Make sure it isn't too much because it'll just look all shiny and kind of out of place. Once the water dries, you may have to add another drop or two just to level it out because this product does shrink. After all of that, you rim your base and you have yourself a Shrek paradise. Your very own miniature swamp base. <laughs> Feel free to mix up the colors to give an even more vibrant base than mine, or dinge it up with more darker and drab colors to make a more mysterious swamp theme. Also a big thank you to War Games Delivered as well. They sent me over a bunch of paints and I figured I would get some good use out of them. With the holiday season coming up, they have given you folks a good old discount of 15% off any order when you use the code DICECHATTER15 at checkout. Also, if you use the affiliation link down below in the description, you are helping me and the channel out. You grant me a kickback from all of your purchases. I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.